Hey guys, welcome back to another Disney talk for a minute. Um, I want to take a shift and talk about different things throughout my channel. So, I want to talk about different characters that are from the same category. What I mean by that? Well, first I was going to start the video off with the one where I talk about different shows about children. Different characters like the Little Rascals, Recess. High School Musical and a few others. These hum these humble shows about these kids are an amazing look into communities of different characters that bond together a great mashup of different characters you all know and love in many different ways. I was going to talk about each and every one of those characters and their backstories and how they work into the stories as they tell. Now, since this is going to take a long time to make, I wasn't really sure I was going to get a TV show out of it or just a development video. Well, you guys can figure it out later on. But I think I'll make a TV show out of it because it's going to take a long time to mention all the shows that had kids in it, not to mention everything about them. So, without further ado, I haven't watched all of them yet. Not even the Little Rascal ones yet. So, we're going to take a step back from those particular program category. Talk about something different for once. It's not really a Halloween t category in particular. But I want to talk about something magical, so it will fight, involve into the Halloween category. In any case, let's talk about many different, three different possible characters that are very same in every different ways. And you might be surprised how the same they truly are. We're going to talk about Mary Poppins, Nanny B, and the Cat in the Hat. What do these three characters have in common? Well, they're both very magical, of course, but they're very own. Um, very own master abilities, and they all have to have a habit of, well, helping kids out in many different ways. So let's look at all three of these characters together and see what bonds them in many different ways and how their things differ and how they are as characters, what they do for the characters that make them interesting. Not only that, but what's their motivation as characters? In different ways, there are motivations for each one and every one of them. In a way, there are different ways to say what they could be. Let's take a closer look at both of these characters together to form an association for all these creatures and how and all these people and how they form and how they are the same creature as we only thought. Now there is a theory possibly saying that Mary Poppins is the same creature as it, but I don't believe that's true. I believe Mary Poppins is her own identity. If she was the it, I would think that she would feed off children right away and not switch on a dime. I think that'd be very weird. If you're a creature and you work on that, you probably should be. You wouldn't switch on a dime. You would probably. You would probably just stick with the motivation you have. So I don't know why would I don't know why would why would Mary Poppins or it be the same person? It would not make much sense to me. But that's my opinion. Anyway, let's get on with. The characters together. The first one I want to talk about is definitely Nanny McPhee. She's a definitely Halloween character for the most part, but their whole ideal is that she's a lot like Mary Poppins. She's a nanny that comes to help troublemaking kids, such as these kids that are, well, very mischievous, I have to say. But either way, she comes to the house to take care of them, and each time they start to learn to care for her and learn about her. They understand she's ugly, but in the end, as they're getting nicer and nicer, she starts to become prettier and prettier as time goes on. Her, she has a mole or a wart, and no soon go away as they start to learn. Sure, she looks ugly at first, but as they start learning how to be kind, her face starts to become, well, beautiful. It starts to look more ranching than you think that she ever could be. No one any feeds a very interesting identity. Identity. She's a creature of, well, scariness. She is definitely a magical creature in her own right. What are her abilities? Well, her abilities are convincing people, just like Mary Poppins would be. But they don't, she doesn't want to put ideas in people's heads. She kind of teaches them in a way. Also, she has a way of demanding people. With her magic cane, she can demand anyone to do anything she wants in her command. Do anything she wants. Whatever she wants. This cane is definitely her, her definitely an ultimate weapon, as opposed to Mary Poppins' umbrella. And opposed to Cat in the Hat, who has his own abilities as well. And we'll get to him pretty soon. But Nanny McPhee, that's her power. She has her own 
magical abilities to have a cane, her powers to move her body to make her look self beautiful, and it's a kid's right from wrong. In most surprising way, she demands. That's the most private achievement. And she also makes the kids care. Like when her like their parents who are getting sick and unfortunately not doing so great with them. They they te he teaches the parent he teaches she teaches them to care. And as they grow and grow, they grow fond of May McPhee. And unfortunately I have to say goodbye to her after a while. She comes back for the other kids at some point. And it's the same person as the baby, the maid. Very interesting story, I have to say. Maggie Fee is definitely a, definitely a, one character that tells you that, well, it's nothing else to just judge people by appearances. In a way, she brings out the thing that, the thing that brings out most. She looks ugly, but yet she helps out the family and does the best she, and does demand work. That's her most powerful weapon, is demanding. She teaches the kids how to be right from wrong. And to keep caring of her parents. As for Mary Poppins, we'll get into her right away. Mary Poppins does the opposite of what Nanny Fee does. Mary, while Nanny Fee teaches the kids, Mary Poppins teaches the adults to be more open with their kids and hang out with them more and have more fun. Mr. Banks has too much work to hang out with his two kids, so he has to go out a lot, causing them to be more showmaking, more gruesome. Same with the McPhee kids, but the kids have to be more caring and more trust, more trusting and understanding of their parents. Their parents couldn't be there all the time for them because they were, well, at work all the time. And because they couldn't do too much work because they were poor and they needed help. So, with that in mind, it was very two different, two different stories. Anyway, Nan McPhee also has a, has a magical flying motorcycle that she takes her children into to help out with certain issues. Now, Mary Poppins was going to have the same thing, but that kind of was left out. So what about the ability that she has to offer? What does she have? She has her umbrella that she uses to fly and do magical properties with, similar to Mary McPhee's cane from before. But she doesn't use it to demand the children to do anything. She just uses it to fly. And her real demanding qualities are the ones that are left in her hands. Whenever she snaps, she cleans up the house in an instant. And the teachers later teaches the kids how to do that, like Jane and Michael. They both learned how to snap and how to make their rooms nice and clean in an instant. She takes some uh, wacky adventures through different portraits, different stuff like that, and magical things happen. In an instant. Instead of using a cane like Mary McPhee does, Mary Poppins needs to be more powerful. She seems to have this, this magical thing wrapped inside herself. That's a talent inside of her. She makes people go to sleep with a nice, soothing voice. She definitely has quite a lot of abilities, Mary Poppins. She must be the most powerful character on this list of mine. She probably could kill these two characters in an instant, no problem. Although, then again, the cat in the hat had, probably has more abilities than she could ever have offered, too. But we'll see. Anyway, Mary Poppins definitely has her own bills as well as facts. She can definitely bring up a fight if she wanted to. But in any case, that's her powers, pretty much. She is definitely... But the whole point of her is that she's supposed to teach the, teach the adults to be paying more attention to their kids and have more fun with them. Because before you know it, they're going to grow up and they won't know anything about the parents. So Mary Poppins, is there, it's her job to make sure the parents are there for their kids. Now let's get into the most interesting one of all, the cat in the hat. The cat's a very interesting character. For, unlike the other two, he kind of breaks into the house. I mean, okay, yeah. Okay, I he kind of scared the bejesus out of that out of the father. But again, he did come to her ha He did come to his house, and she did present herself as a nanny. So did Mary Poppins. But the cat in the hat just appears to their house, the two kids, one day. And, well, I guess he kind of breaks into the house, sort of. I mean, it is a little awkward to me. But it seems like, to me, the cat hat only appears when, when, the, when the kid is a good thinker. He could be some kind of spirit identity, a thinking spirit of some kind, that brings the kids to show.
because there because it was raining outside that's where most kids think of something to do when that happens things flow into their heads imagination comes and that's where the cat in the hat appears they imagine something to help them have fun in their own house that's what i think it's their all it's all their imagination perhaps maybe who knows he's an imaginary friend of some sorts who knows but i do think the cat could be real in some capacity how could it be hmm then again who knows the kids came just imagining him just so they could have fun in their houses every now and then some say that he's the father of their kids because the other father's never never talked about or shown but then again i could say probably not because well we see the dad in the the cat in the hat knows a lot about that we see what he looks like so he can't be the cat in the hat that would be a little bit weird so i don't know i don't think so and being divorced and all that so i don't think that's possible in this case at all but anyway let's take a look at his abilities the cat that has many different abilities. He has a magical hat that can definitely take out anything he wants. He has umbrellas that does magical things as well. He can stack things pretty good with his with his very balancing abilities. Although he does fall on top of himself, he does have a good way of talenting himself to make to make him stand up. He has he also has magical other magical abilities like his magical machines. Do different things. A traveling machine they could travel anywhere they want to go. A cleanup machine, which I would really want really badly to do. He also has many helpers, like Thing 1 and Thing 2. He helps out a lot in situations. He keeps in the box a lot. I don't really know why, because, like, I don't know, I guess they're little troublemakers, I guess. <laughs> he also has them, and he, has, and he also has the cats. He has, inside his hat, he has little cats that are all from ABC. I'm not going to say them all today, because that would be crazy. But they help out as well as the thing one and thing two. So the cat that has a lot of minions. Well, I wouldn't say minions, but just a lot of friends to help him out with different things. And every now and then, not only does he have a thing one and thing two, he also has a thing three and a thing four. Now, we would never see these characters, but it's highly mentioned that he has these characters in his hand just in case if he ever needs extra help. So with that in mind, the cat that has different abilities to multiply and many different abilities to have different hat that come out of his hat, balancing, an umbrella, and more. Who knows what other things he can do with his machines and different things. Now we looked at all of these characters together, what do we think we what do you think is the most powerful? Mary Poppins probably is the most powerful to me. Let me know what you guys think. Now, what's the lesson the cat in the hat trying to teach us, I wonder? Could it be to not let blood strangers into your house? No, not necessarily. I think a true lesson of what of what Captain Hat tried to teach is to be an incredible thinker and to have fun with your imagination. I wonder if that's the case for him, because he definitely I think it's focused on is to have fun all the time. I wonder if his ability is to have fun with these kids and to be their imagination. Let them run wild. Encourage them to be amazed. The my theory is my evidence comes from the Seussical show, where Jojo is always visited by the cat in the hat, as no one can see him but him, and he's always causing trouble with the fact. We never the adults never see the cat in the hat as he fades away after they come. So I wonder if the cat is supposed to be like an imagina- imaginary friend of of Jojo's. Making him think, making him explore different things. The cat must be identity of all those things. A spirit where he can adapt to thinking. He comes to those kids that think really hard. He's a special identity that no other else has. He also he mentions that he doesn't find he doesn't often find thinkers like Jojo. So maybe these kids, Sally and Comrade and Jojo, are three kids who have once thought about the cat in the hat. And think about him. They once imagined him themselves. So at one point or another, this cat in the hat is their identity, is an identity that that's a spirit of, well, imagination and thinking. And he encourages them to think and not to be afraid to do so. In a lot of Dr. Seuss books, 
we see that many kids in the books of his are scared or nervous to even think or to have their imagination blown wild. But it's important to let that happen because you just never know what imagination you'll wake up with and the stories you'll tell. It's an amazing thing and you should not be upset about that and not cause trouble because your imagination is the most amazing thing in the world and you can create anything you want. That is the, that is the lesson of the cat in the hat. It's a very interesting one indeed. All these characters have some lesson to teach. In a way, they're not scary. They're not villains. They're just good, magical people that like to help kids out in many different ways. And I think that's good to, that's, that's good enough to me, don't you think? What do you think about these magical characters? Which one's your favorite? And tell in the comments below who you think is the strongest. To me, I think it's still Mary Poppins. But what do you guys think? Tell them in the comments below. And I'll see you next time. Bye. And recommend any other characters that you think kind of match together. And I'll talk about them in a separate video eventually. Bye.